The reason for this video is for me to discuss what makes a good forge. Now I want to make this video because when I was starting out I had a really hard time finding this information and as a result I went through two forges before I actually made this one. This is the third forge I have ever made. I made it a year and a half ago and since then I've burned a lot of fuel through it. So in this video I'll take you top to bottom on the forge and show you exactly what I believe makes a good forge and what features a good forge must have. The first thing you might notice that's different about my fire pot is the steel assembly that's around it. I got the idea for this from watching YouTube videos, particularly of Russian Damascus making videos. Now they use this because they can make the fire very deep without having a big mess around the table. An additional advantage of this is it gives a straight channel for the smoke to go up into the hood so it doesn't have a lot of room to go up and around your shelf. The top of my fire pot is located 12 and a half inches from the bottom of my hood and I have a 12 inch hood above the fire pot. Some people use 10 inch hoods but a 12 inch hood does draw better. An alternative to the steel assembly is to use fire bricks like this. The advantage of the fire bricks is that you can easily remove them if you want and if you have an awkward shaped piece it's very easy to move them around. The disadvantage is that they take up 4 inches on the table each. So instead of having 12 inches for tools, I have 8 inches for tools around the side of the forge. The fire pot has a triangular shape and that's necessary for the fuel to properly consolidate once it's being burned. The fire pot also has a rotating clinker breaker which makes it much easier to clean of ash and clinker. It's important that the side of the forge has a lip around it so that tools and coke do not fall off once you're using it. These lips cannot be taller than the top of the fire pot, otherwise your piece will come in at an angle and it will be heated unevenly. This is the bottom view of the fire pot. You can see it's attached to the air assembly by two bolts and also on the side there you can see I padded it up with weld because the fire pot although I started with a half inch burned down to three eighths so I padded it up to half inch in some places and in other places the most used places I padded it up to five eighths of an inch so that should make it last a lot longer this is my clinker breaker handle it simply works by rotation now here is the ash dump it's just counterweighted Every solid fuel forge needs a way to regulate the air. If you use a hand crank blower, then you regulate the air by the f amount you crank it. If you have an electric blower, there are two methods to use. You can either do it electrically with a rheostat, or you can use a, an air gate, like I'm using here. Now this air gate is very simple, it just has a hole which, depending on how much I slide, is open at a different distance and also it has a little pinhole which I burned in so that even when it's completely closed there's a tiny bit of air going through so that the fire does not snuff out. You will need a good air source when powering a forge. This is a bouncy castle blower and it has a very strong blast. The disadvantage of this is that it runs at 85 decibels. It is very loud and unpleasant to be around without hearing protection. Now my forge was made to be portable. You can see here I have a piece of angle iron for the leg that goes into a piece of tubing. This is so that the top can completely separate from the legs. And also the legs are connected by four straps around and all those straps are bolted. And the legs are also welded onto casters so I can move it around easy. Now that I've discussed what features make a good forge, I'd really like to shine a light on what makes a bad forge. One, a brake drum is an awful fire pot given the shape. It does not have a triangular shape which allows the fuel to naturally flow into the center once it as it gets consumed. As a result it really has an uneven burn and it just does not work well. It's very frustrating to use. The problem is a lot of people who don't know any better as well as a lot of people who pretend they know a lot recommend these types of forges. I would suggest that you request photos of their work and upon seeing their work, decide for yourself if this is a person you'd like to take advice from. Another big problem are the air sources people recommend. Things like hair dryers and vacuum cleaners do not make good blow. They do not work because they provide a high volume but very low pressure. For a blower, what you want is very high pressure, a very strong blast which 
can get from the bottom of the fire pot to the top. Now to summarize the features of a good forge. You want a good tapered fire pot if you're using a bottom blast forge, a strong blower, an ability to control the air, you want a lip around your forge which does not extend higher than the top of your fire pot, a good air assembly meaning a clinker breaker in there which makes things much easier to clean at the end, and also an easy way to dump the ash. This is a good forge and I've been very happy with it. The only disadvantage of it is that it's large and now that I'm switching to gas primarily I don't want something which I'm not going to be using often to take up a lot of space in my small shop. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps you in your future forge build.